and Kim. There. Hey. Hello. And you've got five to ten minutes. I'm going to go quick. And the Dave Briss would have Unless we get into conversation, then you can go long. Okay. But he's the hook. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Kim Hachadorian with the Nature Conservancy, and thank you, Dave, for um, having me go first and for giving me my name for my presentation, which is Addressing Upstream Impacts on Streams in First State National Historical Parks. So Stream Stewards is a program we started in 2016, and it's a partnership between the Nature Conservancy in Delaware, First State National Historical Park, and Stroudwater Research Center with funding from the William Penn Foundation. Just to give you a little bit of background for those who are not familiar with our Stream Stewards project, um, so this map shows the park boundary. That thick black line is the very irregular, irregularly shaped boundary of the Beaver Valley unit. The First State National Historical Park actually has seven disjunct units throughout the state of Delaware, but when I say the National Park, I'm referring to this Beaver Valley unit, which is um, this map shows and what it's currently still officially 1,100 acres, although we did just acquire about 350 more acres on the northern part, which you can see this actually um, crosses the, the primarily in Delaware, but this is the state line. So we do have part of uh, the park is currently in Pennsylvania and the acreage that is imminently to be added um, is also up in the northern part of the park, so in Pennsylvania as well. And this is the monitoring strategy that we developed. Um, so again, when we talk about upstream, I just want to sort of clarify that for us, when we first started this project, upstream meant upstream of our sensor stations. So we have these streams that flow through the Beaver Valley unit into the Brandywine Creek. What was that? It's okay. Somebody just went off. Oh, I bored somebody. I lost an <laughs> audience member. So um, there's about two miles of the Brandywine Creek that border on the um, the westernmost edge of the park unit, and the streams all flow into that. So our idea was through our partnership with the national park, we can manage the lands around these streams for water quality, the land that's contained within the National Park Unit. So that was the original goal. That's how we set up the monitoring strategy was to locate the sensor stations um, as far downstream on the streams as possible before they flow into the brandy wine. So we could see what's happening upstream of those sensor stations that is still within the area of land that we can manage through the, through the partnership with the park. Um, so these colors um, on the map show the subwatershed for each of these streams. So this northernmost one in Beaver Creek, it has these two branches, and this sort of pretty much forms the northern bar border of the park unit. And this is a really large subwatershed. And again, you see primarily what we're looking at in terms of upstream impact for this is located outside of the park border. Um, this is mostly residential and agricultural. Um, Ramsey Run, which is the, this yellowish color, is almost completely contained within the park unit. Um, we were thinking that this was sort of our ag impact stream because it is surrounded by agricultural land. I should mention about a third of the park unit is in agricultural use. And by that, I mean crop fields and horse pasture. There's four horse farms that are operated within the park. Um, and this agricultural use predates it becoming a national park, and the ag use was maintained when it became a national park. So this, this land um, originally belonged to uh, the Woodlawn Trust, and it was used. There was a trail system. There's a, a big uh, horse community, mountain biking. All of these uses, multi-uses on the trails, and all of the ag use is maintained by the park. Um, so the agricultural, um, we have agricultural wheat yeah, holders. Sorry, oh, well. don't know if I didn't say that. 1,100 acres is shown on this with 350 to be added imminently. So it'll be almost 1,400 acres when that northern parcel is added. Um, Palmer Run is this little brownish color one. 
Um, this is our reference stream because it is completely contained within the park. It has those little wetlands here associated with it, and it is almost completely forested around Palmer. So it's sort of the best possible land use for water quality. So we, um, we're using that as our reference stream. And then the two sort of exceptions to what I started out by saying that mostly we were looking at upstream of the sensor station, but still within the park, um, are Hurricane Run and Ramsey Run. So, I'm sorry, Rocky Run, Rocky Run. So that's the, um, this dark pink and light pink here. So this is Hurricane Run, which comes together with Rocky Run, and then after the confluence, we call this, you know, Lower Rocky Run or Main Stem Rocky Run, flows into the Brandywine, but this section is in Brandywine Creek State Park. So this actually is not within the National Park. Um, so we wanted to be able to see, sort of separate out the impact of Upper Rocky Run and Hurricane Run. So we actually have um, one on Hurricane Run that's actually just outside of the park boundary. It's on pilot school property. And then we have two, two sensor stations on Rocky Run, one which is um, upstream of the confluence with Hurricane and one that's downstream of the confluence with Hurricane. So that was our monitoring strategy. And again, mostly we were thinking with this project that the, the goal would be to uh, work with the Park Service to manage the land to improve and protect water quality um, you know, in, in the park. So we started looking more closely at Rocky Run. Um, again, what, you, what, what everybody pretty quickly realizes is that there are all these upstream impacts, and now I'm talking about upstream, meaning upstream of the park, right? So there's all this land. If you're not familiar with this area, there's a lot of really um, heavy development, especially around that, um, I should have pointed out. So Rocky Run. Uh, headwaters are up in this really heavily developed area. Uh, residential, commercial, this is a Route 202 corridor, so there's a lot of impact um, coming in just where the stream comes into the park. So we're standing in the National Park here, and this is just below um, where the water, the, the stream flows in under 202 um, and becomes part of the park. So. So we're in the park. We started looking at this stream because um, we were seeing a lot of um, a lot of high conductivity readings, especially in the winter. Um, we're doing high flow measurements here. So um, just to, to I didn't give you real background on what stream storage is. I'm not sure um, if everyone's familiar, but really quickly, it's a citizen science program, and I manage the program. We recruit and train volunteers to do water quality monitoring. They work in teams. They're assigned to one of these six sensor station sites. And as Dave mentioned in the beginning, I have these superstar volunteers. Um, here's one of them. You've already seen him in a photo. This is Jeff Chambers. And another one, Chuck, is sitting in the back right there. Um, so I've just got this really great group. I have a lot of people. Um, it's sort of a mix. I definitely have people who are retired, which is awesome because they're they're just very available. Um, I do have some people who work full time. Um, I get young, younger people, students, or people who are recently graduated who are looking to get some hands-on experience, um, build their resume, do some networking. They tend to move on. Um, I tend to not keep them as long as some of the others. But um, I do have some of my original volunteers. Again, Jeff is one from the first cohort. What, I have two minutes left? OK, awesome. So here's just a little pro tip, always bring an umbrella when you go out and do uh, storm sampling. It's a, it's a really useful tool. So again, here are two of my other superstar uh, volunteers. There's this, this guy sitting in the back, Chuck Wagner. Uh, Rob Puddle has been amazing um, in terms of he has a lot of experience through his uh, previous professional life doing working with large databases. So he's really stepped up to help me do a lot of the data management and data analysis, but is also, you know, like Chuck and like Jeff and, and a handful of others, just ready to go out when Matt's like, it's raining, let's go. They're, you know, they're ready to run out, put on their waders and go out and do some do some uh, high flow sampling or maybe getting a grab sample. So 
feel like it looks like we're um, toasting here, like we're about to cheers. And I don't know, I look kind of pissed off. Yeah. What? I don't know. You were the last party in the conference. So I lost everyone who was on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Someone leaves. It was that bad language. Oh, telling you to write it off. I, well, I knew I was being recorded, so this is Yada. a clean version is that of the show. Scott? Hello? Yada is his wife. Yada. You're done, Tim. <laughs> <Sam. laughs> All right, well, it's shared. All right. Okay, really quickly. Um, so as I mentioned, we, we had some um, in the winter after a snow melt, some ridiculously through the roof conductivity measurements at this sensor station, Upper Rocky Run. They were spiking at 30,000, um, which is like the level of, you know, salt water, like ocean water. And uh, this is just one day I was out with Jeff who finds this, like, you know, bag floating downstream and just being a good stream steward. He's like, I'm going to throw away this trash and then look at what it is. And it's like an empty rock salt bag. We're like, yeah, that's so this is what Rocky Run looks like, where it flows into um, the Beaver Valley unit. And then not 100 yards upstream, this is what Rocky Run looks like. So it goes under 202, and there are all these pipes. So Dave Bressler started us on this project, but he just went up and looked at, like, well, let's just look at what happens upstream, outside of the park. What is, what is coming into this stream? And we started sampling all these pipes. And we found this one, which we, we sort of um, gave our data to, um, to um, Mike Harris, who coincidentally is the husband of one of my stream stewards volunteers. He works for the county, and he involved some staff from ZENREC, and they went out and further investigated what's going on here. You can see the concrete being corroded. It's pretty high conductivity. And this, these pictures are in the fall. This is November. But even in the summer when we sampled, this was very high conductivity. So this was not uh, stormwater runoff. This was not road salt. Um, so they, they started investigating. This is right by the Concord Mall. Um, yeah, okay, that's the that that off the parking lot? Somebody was telling me about that. Yeah, this was, so they, they figured out where this was coming from exactly, and they're working with people at the Concord Mall to address this high conductivity and what's causing this. So this is just one kind of example, but really, of course, this is just one pipe. This is a much bigger picture of, you know, the upstream impact on this one particular stream. Um, and it's very much related to stormwater runoff, as you can imagine. And I know Chuck is going to talk about a particular project he's involved in. But, so that, that area that I pointed out where the headwaters of Rocky Run are, all surrounding there, there's a lot of um, development that's in the works. And we're working with some county council people. And just to look at, you know, we know this development is going to be taking place. In some cases, it's new development. In some cases, it's a change. And, you know, let's just make sure we're doing stormwater management right from the get-go. So we're trying to, trying to work on that. That's it. Very good. Thank you. Any questions for Kim? Yes. I don't know. That's a really good question. Yeah, I would love to. Who's next? Are you next on the list? Pardon? Yeah. Are you next on the yeah. list? Yeah. Oh, no. On okay. the agenda? Actually, oh, yeah. no, we can wait. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, no. Paul's next. Well, I want to make sure only he's working. Let's do it. You want to do it at lunch? Um, Paul? You want to do your thing, and then we'll take lunch. Okay. All right, so we've got two education pres presentations here. Um, oh, shoot. Hold on. I need to stop this recording. <laughs>